What if I told you there's a graveyard as popular as Disneyland? But that graveyard, it looks nothing like this. Because this is a place of mourning. This is a place of solemn stone figures and serious monuments to reflect that. But then an Angelino came along and decided it could be a little bit flashier. What if death could be a spectacle? At the turn of the century, a man comes along named Hubert Eden, and he doesn't like cemeteries, he doesn't like how they're set up, and he thinks he can do something better. That's how you get Forest Lawn. This is the very first modern graveyard. He wants to get rid of the grimness of death, and he wants to make it more of a pleasant experience. As you can see behind me, you can't see any tombstones sticking straight up. Hubert Eden was the first guy to create the flat marker, which is now everywhere. You watching this, if you're not cremated, or go out like Jimmy Hoffa, are going to have a flat marker. So this is the section started up in like 1906, 1907. And then once Hubert Eden came, you can see up the hill where the tombstones stop. This is the brace between the old type of graveyard and the new type of graveyard. They don't even call this a cemetery. They call it a memorial park. It just looks like rolling hills from afar, and that's by design. This was something that was very new. He brought in a bunch of artists to do work. Every direction we turn, there's something new. Any direction you look is just saturated to make it feel like this is something more than just a place of death. Their website claims that Time Magazine called it the Westminster Abbey of the New World, even though I can't find that quote anywhere else on the internet. But they claim that Time Magazine said that. Whoever writes their facts is like hilarious because they're so specific that no one, it's not real world records. Another fact, the main gates of Forest Lawn Glamdale are claimed to be the world's largest wrought iron gates. <laughs> if you can name larger wrought iron gates than Forest Lawn and Glendale's gates, I will list them right here. There is an art gallery here that has like real exhibitions. I've been to a few, they're good. They've had like Francisco Goya, Matisse, Rembrandt. And right next to that gallery is a giant auditorium. And inside, it houses the world's previous largest painting called The Crucifixion. It is huge. When you're sitting in the auditorium, it takes up your entire periphery. It is one of the craziest things in LA I've seen. Also one of the most undiscovered things in LA that has not blown up. Take some drugs before you see it. It's crazy. So here's the looniest part of this. When this graveyard was built, LA was still relatively a brand new city. And a brand new city doesn't have like any monuments or museums or landmarks. This graveyard, until Disneyland's opening in 1955, was LA's number one tourist attraction. Not just that, it was a place of romance. There's three brick by brick replicas of European churches here, and over 60,000 people have been married here at a graveyard. Ronald Reagan was married here. I know somebody, they were telling me that they had their high school graduation here at a graveyard. Why you would want to have a high school graduation at a graveyard, uh, it seems like bleak to me, but it is a beautiful place. You were still surrounded by death though, so I, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. <laughs> 